Yeah. Can I get an NLT? Anybody got an NLT in the house? Anybody got an NLT in the house? The Lord God Who is just right for him? Those that are eating very, very, very holy versions. It, says, it is not right that man should be alone. I will make a helper comparable to him. Oh, just right for him. I love that. Comparable to him. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you. Lord, speak to us tonight. God, be with us, Lord, as we dive into your word. God, Lord, allow us to know your will. Lord, let your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And we ask that in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Somebody shout love. love. I feel that I've done enough to prepare you for this last teaching. If anybody has been here, we've been going through multiple dissertations on love. Um, we came to explain what love is and that love is more than what society defines it as. Um, love is more complex. Love is a very complicated thing. Even people who say they love don't entirely know what they say when they say that they love. And whenever we speak about a series on love, the first thing that comes to mind is relationships. And that sounds fitting for us to close out with relationships since we haven't fully really spoken about relationships rather than the power that binds the relationship, that itself being love. You with me so far? But to understand love, you must understand God. For God, as the Bible has told us in 1 John, that God is love. To know love, you must know God. And if you know God, then you know love. For God is love. But God is a very complex idea in and of itself. As a matter of fact, when the word God is used in the Bible, it is Elohim. You have to understand that for a finite mind, it's difficult to package an infinite God. It's difficult to conceive him or perceive him because he's a God that is not bound by the limitations of our intellectuality. He's a God who goes beyond our thinking, and it's hard for us to really fully put together who God is. It's hard for us, even brothers and sisters in Christ, to empathetically contextualize. It's hard for us as brothers and sisters in Christ to even understand each other from the various backgrounds that we come from. Even on racial levels, cultural levels, it's hard for us to even get each other. And you wonder why it is that sometimes we don't get love because we don't get God. Y'all with me so far? But when the Bible describes love, the Bible describes, sorry, when the Bible describes God, it describes God as Elohim. Elohim really means gods. For the word El means God, Elohim is gods. That there's a plurality to the singularity. That he is multiple in one. Gods. There are multiple personalities in him. And don't confuse the multiple personalities as a God who's unstable. You see, because the God who is multiple persons can handle multiple personalities. A person with many personalities is unstable. But many personalities all encased in each other, all coexisting into one, perfectly makes sense. For a God whose ways are above our ways and his thoughts being above ours. God thinks on a higher level. He is on a higher level. He's not even on a dimension. He goes beyond that dimension. And love only gives us an ability to peek in or to tap into the dimension of who God is. For if you want to know God, you must know love. And to know love, you got to know God. The very idea of God will blow your mind. So much so that even touching anything that represents him can kill you. Can't touch the Ark of the Covenant, for if you touch it, it'll fry your body. We can't even handle touching God. For, we, for our bodies, this dimension can't fully conceptualize who he is. Can I go a little bit deeper? 
You see, if he's Elohim multiple in one, it must be the multiple that creates the one. He says, let us make man in our own image. He did not say, let me make man in my image. He said, let us, plural, make man in our image. He says, let there be light. He says, let there be the creeping things. Let there be the waters. Let there be a separation of the waters. He speaks everything. But then when he gets to man, he says, let us make him in our image. Observation number one. Cooperation was required to make man. Multiple making man. Multiple personalities making man. Observation number two, relationship made man. Cooperation made man, relationship made man. Let us make man in our image. And in our likeness. Can I go a little deeper? Notice That man wasn't just made by relationship, but that man was an image of relationship. Can I go a little deeper? Came to teach today, is that all right? Let us make man in our image. We are the image of God. We are the image of God's. Y'all missed it. We are the image of relationship. And if we are images of relationship, we are not relationship. We point to relationship. For an image is not the thing. An image points to the thing. Gives us an efficacious understanding of that thing without taking credit for being that thing. We are to point to God. We are to point to relationship. We are to point to what God is, but we should never take credit for being God. He says, let us make man in our image. It's not about me. Whenever you see me, I pray that you see God. Whenever I see you, I pray that I see God. Whenever you see us, If God is relationship and I've been made in his image, then by the very nature, I am relationship or I desire relationship. So if there's a deficiency in relationship, there's a deficiency in me. The reason why there's a man problem, sorry, the reason why there's a relationship problem is because there's a man problem. The reason why there's a relationship problem It's because there's a me problem. Because we have taken multiple personalities and imposed it on others. Me, myself, and I. My will. What I want. What I'll get. Not about pointing to God anymore, but rather pointing to me. The problem with humanity today, the relationship problem that's happening in humanity today, is not a problem of them. It's a problem of self. Tell somebody, say, there's a self problem. He says, let us make man in our image. Now it begins to make sense. God creates Adam. And after he creates Adam, in the next chapter, in chapter 2, we get to an explanation of what God intended for Adam. He says, it isn't good that man should be alone. Everybody says, I'm good all by myself. If you say you're good all by yourself, what you're saying is you're God. Because God did not design you to be alone. You see, we've taken, it is not right that man should be alone to, it is not right for me to be single. And that's not what he's saying. It's just not right for me to be not connected to people. Some of y'all want to get in relationship, but you're not cool with your brother and sister. Some of y'all want to, oh, I need a man, but you're not good with your sister. Not good with your brother, not good with your mother, not good with your father. 
Yet you expect that all the deficiencies with those you should have loved before the one that God is giving will disappear. To somebody, there's prerequisites to this stuff. You, you got to graduate into this stuff. There, there, there's pre- Is it all right if I preach tonight? Because look what it says. He says, let us make man in our image. He says that, that afterwards they made man in his likeness, male and female. He created them. Notice that he never had an intention for Adam to be alone. Because in the first chapter, he makes male and female. Meaning, if female didn't exist yet, it's not because God didn't intend it. It's not that God made a mistake when he said it is not right that man should be alone. The problem was in the first chapter, he was male, not man. It says male and female, he created them. He goes from being male in chapter one to being man in chapter two. Go back and read it. Adam does not have a name. Adam never gets a name. Can I go a little deeper? He gives man dominion, but not man by himself. He gave male and female dominion over the earth. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Then in the second chapter, he goes from being male to being man. And when he is man... He begins to name all the creatures. Everything he sees, he gives it a name. Dog, alligator, cat, pterodactyl, octopus, hippopotamus, spider, scorpion. He names everything. But have you ever noticed that while Adam had the power to name everything, the one thing he could not name was himself? Could not call himself Adam, could not call himself. His name is an Adam. Adam is his title. Because the word Adam means man. We have made the mistakes, my brothers and sisters, in capitalizing Adam. But the whole time it says the man, the man, the man, the man, the man, the man, the man. And it is not right that the man should be alone. Ha. Huh. I came to an understanding what God was really saying here. Is it all right if I share it with you? I only have two minutes. I, I don't have enough time to really break this whole thing down. So I'm going to try to just do the little that I can. Am I boring you guys tonight? I don't have a lot of time, so I got to do this very quickly. He says, says, it's not right that man should be alone. I will make a helper that is comparable to him. Notice what's happening here. He didn't say it isn't right that man shouldn't have a date. He didn't say it isn't right that man shouldn't have a wife. He said, it isn't right that man should be alone. And then by implication, the next part of the verse says, I will make a what? Helper. You see, what I began to realize is that Adam's problem was not companionship. Adam's problem was partnership. Is it all right if I go a little deeper here? You see, Adam had plenty of companions. He called the dog his best friend. He's got got pets. He's got plenty of things that will bring him joy. He's got all the stuff around him, but there's one thing that Adam does not have. He does not have a partner. And no one needs a partner unless they have a plan. And no one needs a partner unless they have a vision. No one needs a partner unless they have a business. No one needs a partner unless there's an enterprise. No one needs a partner. You see, there was no problem with Adam being single. There was a problem that after he was given dominion, that he needed then to call upon who his partner is. You see, ladies, can I teach a little bit? Because we're going to talk a little bit about relationships, just a little bit about relationships. Some of y'all are trying to be friends. 
And here's the problem with being a friend. He already got one. He's already got homeboys. He don't need a homeboy with a skirt. He don't need a homeboy with a vagina. He needs a partner. Y'all leave. Can, can, can I go a little deeper here? Because see, here's the problem. We try to get the man to like us. When the job of the man is to have you be part of his vision. Seriously, you see, he doesn't need to like you. He just needs to believe that you can help him get to where he needs to be. If you cannot challenge your man to become man, if you cannot bring him out of his place of comfort from boyhood to manhood, he will always be your boy. He will always be your toy. You will always be his toy, but he will never make you his partner because you never challenged him to have a vision. You see, a man will not marry somebody he's cool with. He's not going to marry somebody that he likes. Just because I like you don't mean I'm going to marry you. Just because you make me feel good doesn't mean that I'll marry you. You see, a lot of the women, what they try to do is they try to get their man to like them. They go into the business of trying to impress him. But you will not, you will not impress him with your words. You will not impress him with your looks. Your looks will get him to look. But afterwards, he'll look the other way. Because as good as you think you look, there's another lady that looks just as good as you, if not better. Have you ever noticed that there are men who will marry a woman that looks less good because the true beauty in who she is is the fact that she challenges him to be a better person. You see, there's not one man in here who will marry a woman just because she looked good and just because she got a nice smile, just because, nah, that's not why he's marrying you. He's marrying you because one day he sat on a bed and he said, this woman makes me want to do something real. This, this woman makes me want to have kids. This woman it makes me want to have a business have a job get my money right get it together that's what relationship is all about you see relationship is not friendship friendship is just courting but relationship is partnership where we all come to your boy don't want a boy he says i will make him a helper If your man don't need help, then he don't need you. Can I? I only have, I think I got past my two. Okay, okay, because I, I want you to see what's happening here. Okay, can I, can, I, can I spend a little time? I know it's gonna, but I feel like we have to do this because you see, uh, we have women who are trying to impress men. That is backwards. <laughs> the man has to decide for you to be his wife. Because he goes to sleep. And notice what the woman does to him in his sleep. She opens up his flesh. First thing a woman does. <laughs> you know, she's going to have, now I got this feel. Mm. I got this feeling something. <clears throat> I'm feeling good. But notice, he never wakes up till his flesh is closed. Now I have to break this down for you, my brothers. I have to break it down for you, my brothers. Ladies who are opening up the man's flesh are just giving him permission to keep sleeping. Mm. And so his flesh gets open in his sleep and notice what get, gets pulled out, his bone. Can, 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 we, can we go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She pulls out a bone. She's not there yet. She hasn't existed yet. But that bone is there. And then the flesh is closed. And upon the flesh closing, his eyes begin to open. And he looks at her. And he says, bone of my bones. Flesh of my flesh. Eve has not spoken. Eve hasn't took him to Friday's. Eve hasn't tried to impress her, him with her nice new outfit. 
We don't know if her eyebrows were on fleek. We can assume she was probably a very beautiful woman. We have no proof of whether or not she was a very beautiful woman. We have just this. Adam chose her. And Adam says, you are bone of my bones. And you are flesh of my flesh. Adam proposed to her. She did not propose to him. There's this backwards thing going on now. Where women are making men propose. You think that he's going to be your husband because you made him get married to you? No, he will still be your boyfriend with the ring because he'll still find other girls. He'll still look around. He'll still do what he, because he has to be, he's got to be convinced himself that you are the one that's going to propel him to his purpose. If you're not convinced, if he's not convinced that you are his helper, he will never marry you. A wedding does not imply marriage. Because a man, when he decides, doesn't care about the feeling, ask Hosea. He went to a whorehouse to go get his wife. And if I have any testimony in here for any young man in the house that I know that's gotten married, it was marriage that made him man. It was marriage that took him to the next place. It was, it was marriage that elevated him. It was marriage that got him serious. It was marriage. You'll know. You, you see, I know when a man about to get married. Yo, man, I got to get it together. I got to get my money right. I got I to gotta get my business right. I, 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 bro, you know, I can't be sitting around like this. I can't, I can't be doing these things. Now, ask the woman what she did for that. Nothing. You cannot convince him. I have a beautiful wife. I love her. She's great and all. She did not convince me. Matter of fact, she gave me plenty of reasons to go away. I don't want to. I don't want to get back to that story because it's still. I feel. I still feel some type of way about that. Um, you know, I thought I had it. I thought I had game for real. But I'm not gonna do that. But the moment I decide, I said, she's, 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 mm hmm. <laughs> a man does not need a companion, a man needs a partner, somebody who'll challenge him, somebody who'll tell him, you ain't right right now. If you're afraid and you're walking on eggshells with the man that you are with, you are not his wife. You're just one of the homeboys. And homeboys always get hit up in moments of convenience. Okay. I gotta finish. I gotta finish. I gotta finish. I gotta finish. Now, men. The Bible says that the Lord put the man in the garden to tend it and to keep it. He says that, then he says, it is not right that man should be alone. Meaning, before the garden, it was okay for him to be alone. It was all right for you to not have a wife because you don't have a plan. It was all right for you to not have a wife because you did not have a garden. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing about a garden. A garden requires tending and keeping. Meaning a garden requires work. Meaning a, gar a garden requires a career. It, re it requires purpose. It re and notice what's in a garden. Boundaries. Some of y'all give your women too many, too many open boundaries. Got, it got quiet, ain't it? <laughs> Ladies, you've gone too friendly. Okay. Proof. The man is in the garden, and one day, even Adam are walking in the garden, and then a serpent comes in. And the serpent tempts who? 
wrong. But pastor, I, I read the Bible. And, <laughs> and that's, 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 that's what it says. Okay? No, the serpent did tempt the woman. But the serpent tempted the man. The serpent did not tempt the woman. The serpent tempted the couple. Eve looks at the fruit and sees it as desirable. Eve says, I like the fruit. Adam says nothing. Can we get into the fall of man for one moment? Because the fall of man was not as we would describe it. We have read the creation narrative wrong. We have read the fall narrative wrong. You see, when we read about Adam, we think we're reading about a man. We look at Adam as a person. And not to say that Adam isn't a person, but we look at him as a person, not realizing Adam is just a representative. We look at Eve as a person, but Eve is just a representative because Adam's name is mankind. Adam is just representing mankind. Eve is just representing womankind. And the fall of man is not a fall simply away from God. The fall of man is a fall away from each other. You see, here's the problem we don't realize is that Eden was still there. They ate, the gar they ate the tree in the garden. They didn't leave the garden yet. They were still in the garden. They sinned together. And yet they were still in Eden. They did not leave Eden until God gets in the garden. And God seeks Adam. Because I told you, Adam, what to do. I told you, Adam, I gave you the vision. I gave you the plan. I gave you what I want for you to do. I gave you, you're supposed to tell Eve and share with your helper what our vision is for where we're going. But you didn't do that. Instead, you let Eve be tempted while she was in your presence. Because the Bible says Eve ate the fruit, then gave it to Adam. So Adam then eats the fruit with Eve because Adam is not, fault, is not the leader. Adam is not being helped. Adam now becomes the helper. It's become backwards because now Eve is telling Adam what to do. Can I go a little deeper? And so now the things have become backwards. God comes in and challenges Adam. And Adam, who just said a chapter ago, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, now looks at God and says, God, that woman that you gave me, you know, that, that woman, that problem, isn't it funny how they didn't leave the garden until Eve became the problem? Y'all, y'all, y'all missed it, y'all missed it. Uh, uh, Eve is not an address. Uh, sorry, Eden is not an address. We've treated Eden as an address. Eden is a state of mind. That's why they'll never find Eden. Because Eden is not a location. Eden is where I am with where I am. And now because they've been separated from each other in spirit, they can sit in the same place and they're not in Eden anymore. You see, here's the thing you got to understand is that when Adam and Eve separated from each other, God then deals not with them together. Because the Bible says the two shall become one flesh. If the two became one flesh, why does God have a different prophecy for one and the other? When it should have been one prophecy for both. It's because Adam is in one place and Eve is in another place. Can I go a little deeper, my brothers? Now he's got to deal with the serpent and Adam and the serpent and Eve. Rather than the serpent and Adam and Eve. Rather than the serpent with Isha and Isha. Rather than the serpent with champion and champion's wife rather than y'all with me so far and so here it is that now that God has punished Eve separately and he's punished Adam separately he now has to reconcile them together because if they can't be reconciled we can't be reconciled y'all not understanding the separation here 
causes a separation here. You see, that's the vertical and the horizontal. The cross has a horizontal and the cross has a vertical. If you take away the horizontal, what you got is a pole. If you take away the vertical, what you have is a beam. And it can't be a cross until the two come together. You see, here's what I've learned. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. The horizontal. Love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your mind. That's the vertical. He says the two together because you can't do one without the other. If Adam and Eve are separated, then man and God will be separated. Because marriage is represented by this. The relationship that God has with his people. He says Jesus is the bridegroom. And that we the church are the bride. And that we are preparing ourselves to come up to him. Are y'all with me so far? You see, this is what the creation narrative was about. The creation narrative said, this is what relationships should be. And here's what happens. We didn't allow it to be that way. And so we have separated with each other. Jesus did not come down to free from sin. You see, that's the problem. We simply make it about freedom from hell. We simply make it about freedom from sin. But God said he came to restore all of mankind. From the beginning of the world, the moment that Eve sinned, the moment that Adam sinned, God said, I'm coming to restore Adam and Eve. I'm coming to restore relationship. I'm coming to restore mankind. I'm coming down. And when I come down and when my blood is shed, I'm not shedding my blood just so you don't go to hell. Just believing in me keeps you from going to hell. But if I can sacrifice myself, love you even when you don't love me, show you what agape love looks like, sacrifice myself to you, then you will be able to do it with each other. my time's up so I got to make this effective the biggest problem in society today is relationships can I repeat that one more time the biggest issue in society today is relationships and I'm not talking about husband and wife boyfriend and girlfriend fiancés even in business even in friendships, in everything, we, want proof? There was a time you used to work for a business, you could work there for 30 years. And when your 30 years are up, what do you do? Retire, what do they do with that? What do they do with you? They got you on a pension plan. What is that called? Commitment. Nowadays you work, you're lucky if you put 10 years because they're looking for the next 20-year-old to jump in. Businesses don't have relationships with employees anymore. People don't have relationships with each other. Why? Because they've all become Eve. Look at what's desirable rather than what's necessary. And if you notice, marriages continue to fail not because of them. Jesus said the reason why there are divorces is because of your own heart. Can I challenge you tonight? When Jesus died on the cross, I love how um, Danielle was saying earlier, the ministry of reconciliation. He came to reconcile man unto himself. Meaning, I came to restore my relationship with you. But I came to do that so that you guys can be restored with each other. You want to know why I can't give relationship advice? Why I've learned it's a waste of time? Why I only deal with married couples and premarital, I do premarital counseling. Singles tend to say, so pastor man, I need you to tell me like, what am I doing wrong? Because I can't find my man. Or, Pastor Man, you know, all these girls, man, they, they crazy out here. Man, Pastor Man, I'm telling you, man, these girls, man, they, they, they ain't loyal. <laughs> uh, Pastor Man, I, man, I don't trust none of these girls, man, Pastor. And, and you know, Pastor Man, I'm ready for a husband, but these, these guys are not serious. 
They're not serious. And so they come to me about all the issues that they have. So, so the guy goes, you know, them girls, what about you? Your credit's still busted. You can't keep a job for more than three months. You think you're going to keep a wife for five? And ladies, you know, these. so what am I saying to you? What I'm saying to you is, is first examine yourself. Look at yourself. Last point before I close. I just came to teach. I wasn't ready to go all crazy. Am I sweating? No? Okay, good. Last thing I'll say. Do not, and this is advice before we close, stop over-spiritualizing <laughs> marriage. Please. Pastor, how did you know that Vanessa was your wife? Because <laughs> I came from a Haitian background. All my island people come from, from that background. Very superstitious. And so here's what island people, they'll say, I had a dream and I saw my wife on a mountain. And when I saw her, the Lord had revealed to me that she was the one. I remember when I was, you know, talking to a couple older people about my wife, because it's good to see good counsel. A wise man seeks good counsel. And so I would, I, I, you know, I spoke to some older Haitians. It said good, good, good counsel. Okay. So, and, and I remember... And remember they said, they said, they said, well, okay, Isaac, um, have you prayed about it? I said, my God, if I went this far without praying, yes, yes, I did. I prayed about it. And what did God tell you? I said, well, what was God supposed to say? <laughs> like, he said, well, did you pray? Did God reveal to you that she was the one? So I went home messed up. Like, I was wrecked, because I was like, maybe I need to do a Gideon, like, put out a fleece out, and then, like, be like, Lord, let's see the dew over here, let's see the fleece dry, and the next day, I want the fleece to be wet, and then the dew, that's what I want to see. No, I was trying to, I was looking for signs, I was looking for, show me in the clouds, like, right, she's the one, you know, something, I don't, you want to know what, you want the, you want the revelation? You want the revelation? Pick one. And my wife here. I can do it right in front of her for revelation. Pick one. And you know, like before Christ, anyway. But she not, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if I should die for her. Husbands, you ought to look like Christ. And I said, Hus <laughs> Sorry, Grant, sorry. It will be hard. Number one thing I hear from Capri, woman, you. Was that five minutes? I feel I need to do one more week. I'm not done. There's something I had prophesied two years ago. I said, I saw marriages come in. I love that there's... And you don't need to wait till you got all the money. All you need is a vision. Seriously. Sitting right now. For the young men that are watching, Father, I pray, Lord. That, Lord, you would call them by out to you, Lord, that vision and your, their wife, the way that you saw them. Father, be the head over them as they will be the head. Lord, Father, young men elevated to a new place in you, God, that they will seek and search a helper who will be comparable to them, to be with them. Father, Lord, Father, I pray, Lord, that you will give the women the gift of prayer. To be married to you be all they have, Father. Lord, Father, take away. So, Father, I thank you for the Ishas in the house. And I thank you for the Ishas. Bless us, God, and jobs. I pray for restoration between. I pray I will do a new thing. That the old will be passed away.
Your love came down to me. Your love came down to me. Your love came down to me. Hey. Your love came down to me. Your love came down to me. Your love came down to me. Sing it out, say. Your love came down to me. Yes. Your love came down. Your love came down. Your love came down to me. Your love came down to me. Then what shall I fear? You're looking down for me. 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 You love came 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 down for me. You love it set me free. You love it set me free. You love that set me free. You love that set me free.